to views on news. I am Jawad Hami. Pakistan's Prime Minister Mohammad Shehbaz Sharif has assured the foolproof security measures for the Chinese nationals working on the Dasu hydropower project as well as across the country. Uh, addressing a gathering of the Chinese engineers and workers, Prime Minister stated that the government would ensure that the perpetrators of the March 26 incident uh, should get the exemplary punishment so that it would be a lesson and that no one could commit such dastardly acts in a future. This particular important visit by Prime Minister came uh, in the wake of that particular horrific terrorist attack that uh, took place in Bisham uh, when a convoy of the Chinese engineers was uh, traveling from Islamabad to Dasu Hydel Power Project and uh, as a result of that suicide attack uh, five uh, Chinese nationals uh, were killed and also another uh, loss of life also happened including the driver of their vehicle. There was a strong reaction from the Pakistani authorities. Afterwards, the high-level meeting uh, with the chairmanship of Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif was also held. And also President Asif Ali Zardari and Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif uh, visited the Chinese embassy to express condolences uh, with the Chinese people and the government on this uh, particular uh, incident. Uh, also, there was a statement uh, by the Chinese Foreign Ministry that expressed uh, confidence in working with Pakistani authorities together, especially when it comes to counter-terrorism measures. Uh, we, as a, a matter of fact, know that after the Kabul takeover by the Afghan Taliban uh, back in 2021, uh, there has been a resurgence of terrorism here in Pakistan, mostly associated with the banned Tariqa Taliban Pakistan and its affiliates. Also, uh, let me just bring in a couple of stats which have been shared by the Global Terrorism Index 2024, uh, which uh, is the 11th edition. And uh, it uh, says that in 2023, the deaths from terrorism increased by 22% to 8,352 deaths and are now at their highest level since 2017. This is the global uh, statistics that uh, has been shared by uh, the Global Terrorism Index and uh, most specifically when it talks about Pakistan, it says that Pakistan recorded the most incidents of any country uh, with its number, that is 490 attacks. Also, uh, we have seen uh, on a number of occasions the involvement of the Afghan nationals who have been uh, carrying out these heinous acts in Pakistan using the Afghan soil. Also, uh, we have seen when uh, such incidents happen in the past, in the recent past, in fact, there was a pattern uh, that has been observed of uh, the use of the NATO caliber weapons at the hands of these terrorists, uh, including the thermal imaging and uh, night vision um, and uh, sniper rifles also. Uh, also, when we talk about uh, this particular concern, uh, especially Pakistani authorities declaring the Taliban, uh, Tariq -e Taliban Pakistan as an absolute red line. It had been repeatedly conveying its concerns to the Afghan authorities to take a decisive and a concrete action against the banned Tariq -e Taliban Pakistan. There have been at times assurances, but most of the times that have been uh, denials on the part of the interim Afghan authorities uh, regarding the presence of banned Tariq -e Taliban Pakistan and its affiliates on the Afghan soil also. Uh, a time came, despite repeated uh, concerns conveyed uh, to the Afghan authorities, when no decisive action was taken from the interim Afghan authorities against these banned militant outfits. Pakistan uh, targeted the militant hideouts inside Afghanistan's territory, which later on was criticized in the uh, harsh uh, tone wording uh, was used in the statements by the interim Afghan authorities also. But Pakistan uh, Foreign Office said that Pakistan always is desirous of going about uh, dealing with this particular menace uh, in collaboration uh, with the interim Afghan authorities. It uh, uh, surely happens to be the responsibility of the interim Afghan authorities as they made a commitment to the international community when they were taking over Kabul back in 2021 in the form of the Doha peace deal that they won't allow their soil to be used against any other country. Uh, all these uh, important aspects are up for discussion in today's show. For that, we are honored to have been joined in the studio by Mr. Navid Aman Khan, he's senior analyst. Mr. Khan, thank you very much for your time for being with us on the show tonight. We really appreciate that. Also on Skype, we are honored to have been joined by Lieutenant General Retired Muinuddin Heather, Senior Analyst. General Heather, thank you very much for your time also for being with us on the show tonight. We really appreciate that.
Also, we are honored to have been joined on the phone line by Ms. Malia Lodi, former ambassador and the former permanent representative to the United Nations. Ms. Malia Lodi, thank you very much for your time also for being with us on the show tonight. We really appreciate that. Uh, let me begin the discussion with you, Ms. Malia Lodi. Uh, what is the way forward? We know that uh, the bilateral relationship between the interim or the de facto authorities in Afghanistan and the Pakistani authorities um, have soured over time and there was expectation as they were taking over Kabul back in 2021 uh, that the things are going to improve but rather um, they have gone 180 degree opposite in the direction and despite the repeated concerns conveyed by the Pakistani authorities to the interim Afghan authorities there hasn't been any decisive and a concrete action rather we have seen a resurgence of the terrorist uh, attacks here in Pakistan which have been uh, carried out using the Afghan soil. What is the way forward? Are there are a number of uh, measures Pakistani authorities had already taken. Pakistan has to had to resort to take a kinetic operation uh, within the Afghanistan's uh, territory. What else can Pakistan do ahead in order to impress upon the interim Afghan authorities to take a decisive action against the banned TTP in particular? Well, for a start, as you know, uh, relations between Pakistan and Afghanistan have plunged to a new low. Uh, and this is obviously in the wake of the multiple terrorist attacks that took place on Pakistani soil, uh, which were carried out from Afghanistan. Uh, in response, as you pointed out, Pakistan retaliated by undertaking um, airstrikes uh, against uh, TTP hideouts uh, within uh, Afghanistan. This, by the way, wasn't the first time. It was the first time that Pakistan acknowledged and declared that it had carried out kinetic action, but it has also previously targeted TTP militants and their bases, but never really uh, acknowledged it. So we are at a point where Pakistan has exercised what I call coercive diplomacy in mounting pressure uh, on the Taliban authorities to respond to Pakistan's security concerns. Uh, in addition, uh, Pakistan has, before these kinetic uh, actions, uh, used other leverage that it has, and it has considerable leverage. It has, uh, for example, uh, imposed a tighter restrictions on transit trade. And I don't want to go into the detail, but just to flag that point. And of course, as you know, last uh, November, it also carried out the first phase of expelling or repatriating uh, Afghan who were living in Pakistan illegally and had no documentation. Now we're in the, on the threshold of the second phase uh, of this uh, plan to repatriate Afghan living here, uh, apparently on Afghan citizen cards, which were issued by Pakistan some years ago. Now these Afghans are also to be repatriated. Now these are all ways in which Pakistan has mounted pressure. So if it's used the stick, it's also using the carrot. Only last week, we had a trade delegation go to Kabul at the invitation of the Taliban authorities. It was headed by Pakistan's former secretary, uh, and it tried to uh, discuss the kind of trade issues that are paramount uh, for the uh, Afghan uh, gov uh, interim government. And some concessions apparently were put on the table. Certainly, the statement issued after the talks by the Afghan side said that several agreements had been reached on um, issues of transit trade and otherwise also on, on trade issues. Right. So, I mean, this is where we are. So Pakistan has used, as I said, the carrot and the stick. And I think uh, one has to also recognize that stable relations with Kabul is a strategic compulsion for Pakistan. Pakistan has troubled relation, relations with India on one side of its border, the eastern side of its border. It has, uh, as you know, uneasy relations with Iran, where, you know, the two countries traded airstrikes not so long ago. Uh, and Pakistan cannot afford to have uh, unstable borders or three hot borders, as it were. All of Pakistan's security policy for seven decades, almost second decade, seven decades, has been to avoid a two-front situation. But today it is confronted with a virtual three-front situation. So it has to start easing the pressure also on itself. Uh, but in order to do so, it clearly needs the cooperation of the Taliban authorities. And my understanding is that some of the pressure that Pakistan has mounted may well see uh, the Taliban uh, responding uh, to Pakistan 
in the days and months to come. But of course, we have to wait and see whether that actually happens. Right, uh, Ms. Malia Lodi, former ambassador and former permanent representative to the United Nations. Thank you very much for taking time out for views on news tonight. We really appreciate that. Uh, General Heather, when we talk about uh, the pattern that has been observed in the recent past, where, as far as these terrorist attacks in Pakistan is concerned, the access to these ter uh, terrorist outfits of the NATO caliber weapons, uh, most especially when we talk about the thermal imaging and the night vision and also uh, the uh, sniper rifles. So, uh, how uh, Pakistani authorities can actually uh, strategize in order to deal with this particular pattern of access of NATO caliber weapons at the hands of uh, the banned militant outfits? Yes, we should understand that uh, the PTP, which has joined other groups also in Pakistan as well as in Afghanistan to gain strength, uh, is equipped, of course, with uh, uh, very good latest weapons and, as you said, night vision devices. And uh, they, are, they, they are acting on somebody else's behalf. They are a proxy who is giving them these weapons, who is giving them resources, who is giving them targets, who is giving them, feeding them with intelligence. We should, we should realize that. Just, you know, cannot mount such sophisticated operation as happened in the Shangla area recently uh, to keep a track of the Chinese Although there is security division has been raised to specifically uh, protect the Chinese and the CPEC projects. So you should know the pattern, what happened in Wasu, what happened the other day in Shangla, what has happened earlier in killing Chinese engineers. That means people are not wanting, who is not wanting CPEC to go forward, who is not wanting that Pakistan and China should come closer and there should be a crack. In their relationship, we should real, we should we know who these countries are, and who which are the countries we don't want progress in Pakistan. They want there should be disruption in the construction of Maman Dam and Vasu Dam and Dharmar Bhasha Dam or any other project like Gavadar etc. So we will find them active there, and they find people to serve their cause by giving them money, by giving them, you know, targets and by giving them this thing in close cooperation. But our hope is and our effort is to tell Afghans that we are friendly and brotherly country. We have looked after you, uh, your, your refugees for a long time and your ec economy to a large extent also depends on Pakistan, you know, uh, from goods going from Pakistan, especially from our ports and otherwise. So they should realize this. But number one, I think they are not quite in a position to control these groups. And secondly, they don't so much inclination in controlling these groups. And we have asked them to uh, take away these groups which are close to Pakistan, Afghan border, and take them deep into Afghanistan so that they cannot come easily and attack Pakistani targets. But they say, oh, we can't relocate them, and they've asked for a huge amount of money from Pakistan to relocate them. But they, it is their duty to disperse them. It is their duty to control them. It is their commitment in the Doha uh, Pact that they will not let their uh, uh, ban be used against any other country for terrorism, which, is, which they're not doing, and they're not quite cooperating on this issue. As far as Pakistan is concerned, I think it is taking whatever steps are necessary Many illegal Afghans have been sent back, but there are still many left in Pakistan. And otherwise, if Afghanistan is uh, progressing and their currency is very strong, there's all the reason for these Afghans who are in Pakistan, even those who are registered as UN refugees, should now go back to their country. Pakistan has looked after them for, for, for umpteen years now. So, there is a need to relook matter there is a political commitment required like the national security plan which was after the uh, unfortunate attack on the APS I think again such like commitment uh, political commitment is necessary to tackle these problems right uh, now uh, as far as uh, the uh, willingness of the Afghan Taliban uh, general Heather is concerned uh, now you're of the opinion that they are not much into the control 
um, as far as the band Tariqa Taliban Pakistan is concerned. Now, after this particular time that has passed after the Kabul takeover by the Afghan Taliban back in August 2021, uh, uh, the fact state that they've miserably failed in order to fulfill that particular international obligation of not allowing the Afghan soil to be used for the terrorist activities. So for how long uh, the countries in the region and in particular Pakistan towards which the banned Tariqa Taliban Pakistan and its affiliates pose a serious threat and there has been a resurgence of terrorism for how long Pakistan would continue to expect from the interim Afghan authorities that they do concrete action against the banned Tariqa Taliban Pakistan, given the fact as looking at the pattern that they have already miserably failed. So what other options are available at the hands of the Pakistani authorities in particular, if this particular state of denial and the violation of that international commitment on the part of the Afghan authorities continues in the future as well? Question to me? Yeah, yeah, General Heather, please go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. I think uh, we have already raised, uh, you know, committed troops uh, called security divisions to safeguard all the projects of CPEC. And uh, we are increasing their strength to give confidence to the Chinese workers working in Pakistan. And uh, they know that uh, we are very serious about it. But a determined enemy guided by sophisticated intelligence by certain vested uh, uh, interests and countries like I can name neighbor India and others. I mean, this is breached, uh, as has been seen on several occasions. And secondly, so we have to, first of all, uh, improve our security uh, system. And secondly, we have to continue on diplomatic channels with Afghanistan to uh, continue uh, telling them the good reason for controlling these TTPs. And if need be, I think, like before, although it is not very desirable, but we may have, if, if Afghan government doesn't uh, cooperate, we will have to take action against them, especially those people who are close to our border, which are within the range of our artillery and other uh, heavy weapons uh, close by. And we have to make sure that our, you know, in the, in the garb of trade, Afghan transit trade, uh, people don't get in uh, into Pakistan in the garb of Afghan transit trade workers. So we have to be more vigilant and there has to be a better uh, border management so these are the best. And secondly, we have to tell the world that this is not a problem only for Pakistan. This problem will grow again, will go out of out of proportion, will go out of this thing. So that is it is it is it is important that it should be very, seen very, very as a General, threat to as a threat for the interjection over here. Very very important point at the end you have made. I'll come back to take your detailed view regarding this particular because this particular menace of terrorism is not only Pakistan's problem, but we uh, actually also. Uh, look forward to the international community also, also the major regional countries as well as when we talk about a lot of statements earlier came from the U.S. side also in order to give that particular unconditional support to Pakistan as far as dealing with this menace is concerned. Uh, let me proceed uh, towards uh, Mr. Khan. Mr. Khan, now, uh, when the Taliban took over Kabul, of course, there was an impression that they have defeated the international troops and it was a bloodless takeover of the Kabul palace back in 2021. So that with that particular impression or that kind of an atmosphere which spoke about their strength against the international troops, uh, they fought against them for 20 years. Wasn't it at that particular crucial juncture in history uh, for the Afghan Taliban to have had the complete control in Afghanistan so that there was no room left for any of the terrorist organization or a militant outfit to take its roots and regroup itself and once again pose a threat to the regional countries. Jawad, uh, first of all, we need to understand the political dynamics of uh, the Taliban form of government and the political dynamics of the regional politics. Uh, the Taliban uh, leaders, they believe in uh, autocratic, theocratic and totalitarian form of governance. They believe in the, the, the absolute power 
in uh, uh, the, the religious outfits. Uh, the uh, political dynamics of the region are different. The Taliban in past in their first um, um, in term in um, uh, early uh, um, uh, this, uh, this century, uh, they have been uh, struggling for um, against different odds. But when they came in power in 2021, we thought that they might have changed and we, ha we have been told that they are changed now and they are a different sort of uh, uh, Taliban now. But the time proved that they have not changed even uh, an inch of their approach. Look at the behavior of the Taliban uh, government, uh, how they are behaving with the girls, the ladies, the, 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 the Afghan, Afghans in Afghanistan, uh, the way they are dealing with the trade, the, the way they are dealing with the uh, neighboring countries, and the way they are uh, um, uh, expelling, I mean, uh, uh, spilling the uh, terrorism in the, in the regional uh, uh, um, countries. Pakistan has very serious concern over this um, sort of uh, dealing and uh, Pakistan has been suffering because of this sort of terrorism for the last 20 years, at least 20 to 25 years and Pakistan has retaliated uh, um, um, within a couple of weeks back uh, after a long, long patience which should not have been um, I mean, uh, um, expressed uh, so long. Pakistan should have retaliated a uh, long time before, uh, in 20, uh, 27 or 28, uh, it was the right time to give that response to Afghan government or the Afghan uh, uh, authorities uh, regarding the uh, perpetration or the backing of the Taliban, especially the Pakistan Taliban. Uh, right, uh, but as you were specifying uh, this particular targeted strike against the militant hideouts within Afghanistan's territory, Pakistan had to resort to this particular last option uh, after Pakistan repeatedly conveyed to the Afghan authorities, look, this is your responsibility, you need to do something about it uh, um, in definite terms. But you haven't done it, so we are forced to take this particular action inside your territory, targeting the military and hideouts but afterwards what we saw was the statements which came from the chief uh, spokesperson of the Afghan Taliban they were threatening in tone the kind of uh, threat was there uh, uh, do you think they learned any sort of a lesson out of that or the message was well received on their part they haven't learned lesson but they will learn lesson then Pakistan need to keep on Learn, uh, teaching that lesson to the Afghan authorities because Pakistan is not, not na, now not ready to bear this uh, burden any longer. Pakistan has um, beared uh, terrorism for the last, um, I, as I have earlier said, uh, more than 25 years or 20 years. So we are not ready to bear it any longer. Right. Uh, let me once again proceed to General Heather. General Heather, one last quick question to you. Uh, as you already mentioned, that this particular menace is not only Pakistan's problem. Uh, we know that Pakistan, for a matter of fact, had been the frontline ally in the war on terror as far as the U.S. and its allies was concerned when they invaded Afghanistan. Uh, Pakistan supported them. Now, when Pakistan is being hit, as uh, we look at the ISPR statement after the Bisham attack, that Pakistan is uh, the perhaps the only uh, enterprise that is uh, fighting against this menace of international terrorism. Uh, we know uh, for a matter of fact that there have been economic challenge here in Pakistan. If this particular pattern of denial and not taking any concrete action against the band Tariqa Taliban Pakistan on the part of interim Afghan authorities is uh, seen in future and Pakistan as a last resort ha has to go for more kinetic actions uh, within Afghans, uh, Afghanistan's territory, don't we uh, look forward to these major powers, particularly talking about the US, which has said on a number of times that we um, give the unconditional support to Pakistan. So in, uh, amid the economic difficulties, what's expected from the US in particular? I think uh, as far as US is concerned, their, their, their interest is that uh, Afghanistan uh, should continue to be a hotbed of, you know, these uh, outfits, which he, he can use to uh, its own advantage against China, against Iran, against Pakistan, or 
whatever in the region. So we, we, we don't think, in my opinion, that they would want everything to become very peaceful and that uh, they will do much to help us to control the situation. Because as everybody says, they're using American weapons, American equipment, and uh, I mean, and, and, and very sophisticated intelligence somebody is providing them with all the uh, all this. So secondly, India, of course, also would not like to help us uh, in this field. They are quite happy that if Pakistan is attacked and we suffer economically and otherwise uh, in the country, there is no progress uh, because of terrorism. As far as Iran is concerned, uh, they, they also are a victim of terrorism. Recently, there was a big attack on Salman, the Singh death anniversary, General Salman's, and uh, it was feared. There were, there were people, they said, from, uh, you know, who are uh, dissidents, like Baluchi dissidents, which had been used. So, of course, we know which country wants to destabilize Iran. So, this is the, this is, uh, uh, our country, Pakistan, and as well as KPK, has become a hotbed of many intelligence agencies, and a great game is being played here. And uh, they're not very really keen that Pakistan should be in peace, and they want us to be in turmoil, and they are doing whatever. So the only hope that we can get is we should continue with America and European Union seeking their help in this regard without much hope in my my opinion. But I think OIC and Islamic countries and Gulf countries and others, we should involve them, prevail upon Afghanistan, those countries who are helping Afghanistan, that they should control these terrorist elements in the interest of their own country. Otherwise, there will be anarchy in Afghanistan and they will not be able to have progress. And if somebody is wanting to go through Afghanistan into Central Asia, bring back, you know, uh, oil from there and take other produce into Central Asia, that dream will fail. So I think it is in the interest of Iran, it is the interest of Pakistan, I feel India also, which wants to have trade with Central Asia uh, through Pakistan and through Afghanistan, to in the long, in, in their visionary, this thing, they should make sure that there is peace here and terrorism is controlled. And it will be effort. I think Islamic countries should also come forward. Uh, Qatar can play a very important part. It has always played an important part in these negotiations. And Pakistan should keep the guard up. And if, if people don't uh, uh, listen to us, to our, uh, to our, uh, our plea and uh, our point of view, uh, and if they continue to attack uh, Pakistan territory, it leaves us with no other option but to also reply with force. Retired Muinuddin, Heather Senior Analyst, thank you very much for being with us on the show tonight. Really appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Khan talking about what's expected from the U.S., especially in the recent past, we have seen uh, amid this resurgence of terrorism, the State Department has come up a number of times about, uh, about, Pakistan, uh, about unconditional help towards Pakistan dealing with this particular menace. As uh, you've heard, uh, General Heather is of no hope, with the least hope that the U.S. doesn't want any uh, sort of peace over here. It, uh, and uh, nothing substantial could be expected from it as far as dealing with terrorism is concerned. What's your opinion about it? I mean, I will humbly defer to the uh, General Heather's opinion. Uh, I think this time, uh, America is also very much concerned as China or Russia or the other regional uh, powers, they are of that concern that uh, there should be peace in the region, especially in Afghanistan. But in Afghanistan, Afghan government is not ready to bring peace in the region and in Afghanistan. They are hiding or they are providing that support or harboring all the, um, uh, the terrorist militant outfits over, over, over in, the, in, 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 in Afghanistan. But that's an established fact now. So what, what about the U.S. authorities, if they are as per European and if they are really interested to see peace in this particular region? Uh, should it be limited only to the statements or the expression of you know uh, that particular unconditional help or should we be seeing that particular help uh, coming in some concrete form towards Pakistan? Definitely. Now America cannot uh, leave Pakistan um, in, uh, uh, at this stage when Pakistan once again is suffering 
from this um, um, layer of the worst terrorism. Uh, Pakistan now needs American help as well as Pakistan needs um, um, Chinese help in this region. America has again developed its interest in the region because of the worst, worsening uh, 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 law and order situation uh, in Afghanistan. Because uh, uh, the stronger um, terrorists in Afghanistan are really uh, a big threat to the Western world and America as well. So America doesn't want to uh, get those outfits stronger and stronger and become threat to America once again as uh, they have been uh, attacked in 9-11. Uh, um, uh, Could there be any s a certain manifestation of that concrete help, help coming amid these economic difficulties Pakistan is faced with uh, when we look forward uh, to the U uh, US in particular? Yes, it is. What, wh what sort of manifestation do you, as per your understanding, could be possibly be there for Pakistan on the, uh, on the part of the US? Uh, at this stage, I think uh, America should uh, um, bring those c comforts to Pakistan uh, uh, regarding the dealing of IMF, number one. N uh, IMF is very smoothly dealing with Pakistan. Uh, you know, uh, in the last government, IMF, IMF have been uh, creating problems for uh, uh, Pakistan in, uh, in its dealings, but now it is smooth sail because of that American, you know, support. Uh, it shows that America is now uh, 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 backing that, uh, I mean, economic edge to Pakistan. America, uh, 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 American president has written a letter to the P Pakistani prime, prime Minister recently, and Pakistani Prime Minister has uh, uh, responded, it, uh, responded it, uh, I mean, uh, 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 positively. Right. It shows that Pakistan and America are now once again and developing their uh, political and uh, democratic. As far as the security matter in yeah. this particular region is concerned, I'll come back to you, take your uh, deeper understanding regarding what could be more manifestations of this particular support by the U.S. to Pakistan. Mr. Zahir Shah Shirazi, Afghan affairs expert, has joined us in the show. Mr. Shirazi, thank you very much for your time, for being with us on the show tonight. Uh, let's uh, talk about this particular uh, expectation from the U.S. in particular. As Mr. Khan has also pointed out, a couple of days back, we saw the U.S. president writing a letter to Pakistan's Prime Minister, Bashri, we have seen uh, 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 the talk of uh, 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 you know a, co a convergence of point of your collaboration as far as the security matters is concerned. Uh, lately, we have also seen in the recent past during this amid the resurgence of terrorism here in Pakistan, State Department uh, said that it was uh, ready to give unconditional support as far as Pakistan's battle against the TTP is concerned. Uh, we know that Pakistan is going through uh, economic difficulties. If the pattern of denial and taking no concrete action against the banned TTP on the part of Afghan authorities continues in future and Pakistan as a last resort has to go for more kinetic actions. What's expected from the US keeping in view that Pakistan had been the frontline ally in the war on terror along with the US and its allies for over 20 years? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, what I understood from your question, uh, perhaps the US concern and asking the Afghan government to, uh, you know, uh, uh, did not allow their soil to be used against Pakistan. It's, I think it's a kind of a very diplomatic statement because it is the U.S. Uh, whose wrong policies had again put Pakistan into trouble. And uh, importantly, uh, the Kabul's inability to carry out uh, uh, successful strikes and root out the causes of terrorism, which are, uh, you know, uh, uh, entering into Pakistan and they are targeting Pakistani security forces, Pakistani civilians, and creating law and order situation for Pakistan. Uh, the, the Afghan government spokesman, Zabiullah Mujahid, has uh, also admitted that uh, in some areas along the border with Afghanistan, the Kabul government don't have a rate. But uh, an important situation is that why not? Uh, they should be interacting with Islamabad. They should have joint ventures. They should, uh, you know, strike those uh, terrorist hideouts. And uh, the Afghan government can provide them intelligence uh, uh, support. But I don't think so. The, the Kabul government is willing to, uh, you know, uh, go full pledge against their half-brothers because uh, they feel that the TTP, the ETIM, and all those uh, uh, militant elements, they had been uh, towing their ideology, uh, what they believe they, they, they have supported them in their war against uh, the occupation forces. So that is one reason uh, the Kabul has failed to carry out and uh, stop those militant activities in Pakistan.
okay, if Kabul has uh, failed in order to take any concrete action against their half brothers, as you mentioned, uh, the banned Tariqa Taliban, Pakistan, uh, Pakistan had to resort to that last option of striking within Afghan, Afghanistan's territory. After which, we saw the statements coming from the chief spokesperson of the Afghan Taliban, which were very much threatening in tone. Uh, what way forward uh, do you suggest for the Pakistani authorities? Look, this is a very good I think Pakistan and Afghanistan are neighbors. Uh, they can, uh, you know, uh, change their borders, first thing. The second thing, uh, I think we should negotiate, we should convey uh, 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 to the Afghan authorities as well as the international community. I think there is no denying of the fact that now some of the, some of the hostile forces, they are patronizing the TTP, the ETIM, the BLA, the BNA, and they are, yeah, we have seen, we have evidence that uh, most of those terrorist activities which are carried out in Balochistan, in Turbut, now the killing of the Chinese engineers, they have links with the TTP and other uh, uh, militant elements which are operating from Afghan soil. And again, today the CTD counter-terrorism department report has uh, confirmed now that the TTP has planned the attack in Khoistan and they targeted the uh, Chinese engineer. So now we have to be very realistic why those hostile forces and who are behind them, who are trying to create line order situation in those areas where the Chinese CPAC or the BRI project is being, uh, you, you know, executed. It's from uh, 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 Gilgit, Pakistan to the tribal areas and Balochistan, Gawadar. So I think they are trying to destabilize Pakistan economically. They are wanting to create line order situation. And it is not in isolation. I don't think so. The TTP, the ETIM, the uh, B BLA or the BNA has the, the, the power and authority. They are supported by hostile uh, uh, forces. It is Indian raw. Maybe the coalition forces do have their own interests. Uh, we would now openly discuss why the Americans wanted to, you know, uh, 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 they're, they're not forcing the Kabul government under the Doha agreement to stop those elements from create, creating law and order situation for Pakistan. But, you know, what we see ahead, if they wanted to destabilize Pakistan, this entire region would be destabilized. And there are countries uh, we, we should now openly discuss because it is Pakistan's security which is very important. If anybody wanted to destabilize Pakistan, they would have to face the repercussions. And even if they are the, uh, the coalition forces, they are the Western powers, or even Afghanistan. And now the, the, the American statement, I think it is more uh, targeted towards the Central Asian states, the five plus one, uh, because the Central Asian states are also worried uh, because of the spread of uh, the ISS activities and other militant elements. We have seen the Russian attack, which was claimed by Daesh. And if such activities go on in the Central Asian state, I think they would be uh, in very much trouble. So I think uh, Americans who are part of the 5 plus 1 coalition, perhaps they are more concerned about the Central Asian states uh, than uh, about Pakistan. But I think the recent statement by the uh, uh, Joe Biden administration and the Pakistani authorities' stance about uh, the Kabul's inability, I think Pakistan deserves the right to carry out any kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 precautionary measures to safeguard its interest as well as its sovereignty. Right. Uh, what about the regional approach? has been mentioned by uh, the Foreign uh, Office uh, statement uh, about the regional approach. As far as uh, we've seen uh, the China has been affected in this particular recent attack in Bisham. Pakistan has been affected. Two major regional countries have been directly affected from this particular. There has been a resolve, the expression of the resolve on the part of the authorities from both the sides. How both the countries can go about it in uh, counterterrorism measures together? But it's actually, you know, uh, China is important. Ch Chinese concerns are there. Uh, China is directly collaborating with Kabul. Iran, I think, can play an important role, uh, as well as Afghanistan and Kabul itself, because if they want economic prosperity, they have to keep this region uh, peaceful. They have to stop militant activities, because Daesh is also a potential threat to Kabul government. And I think if uh, Kabul is playing as a proxy and uh, it is uh, safeguarding the interest of uh, those hostile forces which wanted to create law and order situation for Pakistan, even if they are Indian, if they are even the, the Western powers who are countering China and uh, they are having their bases. But one thing, it should be very uh, much clear. Now, the Chinese should also be given a very clear message. Uh, the recent attack on the Chinese interest, it is carried out from the Kabul's soil. And I think Kabul has also, uh, uh, you know, uh, shown is, its inability to stop those attacks. On the other hand, it is also seeking 
uh, financial and other support from uh, China. So uh, this is very important. Now Iran, if it uh, if it is not uh, playing its role, I think Iran Iran would also be uh, getting destabilized. The Central Asian states are very important. And now if we uh, look at the reality, the reality is this: Who are behind these? Perhaps Indian proxy approach and Kabul and the Delhi's interaction. This is very serious for Pakistan because now Pakistan is realizing that if uh, Indian and Kabul nexus prolonged, and now as we have heard. They have also given a free visa access to uh, 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 the both side of the, uh, 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 you know, uh, both the countries have extended a free visa facilities for the students as well as for the uh, health seekers. So this is also important. Now, Pakistan have also conveyed a very uh, strong message. Uh, uh, Khwaja Asif has given a very strong note that perhaps uh, Kabul should stop. Uh, these elements from targeting Pakistani security forces and the Pakistani uh, uh, nation. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if Shiraji, our foreign affairs expert, thank you very much for taking time out for views on news tonight. Really appreciate that. And Mr. Navid Aman Khan, CIA analyst, joining us in the studio. Thank you very much for your time also for being with us on the show tonight. Really appreciate that. With that, we come to the end of today's episode. Thank you very much for being with us.